So if you're looking to add a little bit more dynamics into your action or motion shots, we're gonna show you a really quick way of being able to add motion blur to a still looking photograph. So this is our starting image, and this is how we're gonna end up. So let's dive straight in. So welcome to this iPhotography tutorial about adding motion blur. So we're gonna be using Photoshop today and we've got a fairly simple, straightforward image, but it's a good example that if you're out taking everyday photographs out in the street, a little bit of traffic passes by, this is a really cool way of being able to add a little bit of motion blur um, to add a little bit more dynamics and a bit more energy to the photograph. So. Now we can apply the effect that we're actually going to add to all the elements that are essentially moving in here, be it the people, the cars and the buses. But I think we'll just keep it simple for now and we'll focus on this bus. So all we need to do is initially isolate the bus. So we can do that by using the rectangular marquee tool. And all we need to do is just draw a box around it. Doesn't make it too big, fairly kind of precise, but again, not too close either. Just making sure we encapsulate all the elements that would move, so i.e. the whole bus. Um, so we've got it collect, selected there. And now what we need to do is make a copy of that. So we can go up to the top toolbar and we go layer and we go new. And down the bottom, we're gonna create layer via copy and what that's going to do is basically just make a copy of the bus on its own so we've now got two layers if we just hide our background we've now got the bus on its own and we've got the original shot as well so what we're going to do is work on the bus for the moment here now what we're going to do next is add the motion blur so to do that we're going to go up to filter and down here on the filter menu we go down to blur and the sub options here we've got a dedicated one called motion blur. So straight away, you can see it already adds an effect. And now it's up to us to decide how much of that effect we need and what direction. So we can add in an angle. So now that the bus is actually traveling from right to left, we've pretty much got it on the horizontal here. So that's fine. If our object was traveling in a vertical direction, we can change this radial angle uh, to 90 degrees. So we get the suggestion of upwards movement or downwards movement. But because we just want to keep it nice and simple, let's just return it to zero. And, and again, we can increase the amount of blur depending upon how much we want to kind of connote in terms of speed, how much we want to make it look as if it's moving. So the, the more pixels that we add to that, you can see the more blur occurs. So we can basically make the bus look like it's moving into warp drive. But I think just to keep it sensible, but still show the effect around about 30 pixels, I think I'll be fine for this example. So we click OK. So we've got our blurred version of the bus and the nice crisp background. So what we need to do now is just finitely go in a little bit closer and actually just reveal some of the details that wouldn't be moving. We've got a lamppost here, the top part of it is nice and clear, but where it crosses in front of the bus, it's all blurred. Same with the railings and a little bit with the people down here. So we need to get rid of that. Easiest way to do that and to do it non-destructively is to add a layer mask. So at the bottom of our layers panel, we're just gonna click this icon that says add a layer mask, making sure we're on the bus layer. Now, if we go to our vertical toolbar, choose the brush tool, and make sure our color panels are set to black and white. And now it's just a case of going in really closely and effectively brushing away this mask to reveal the background. So we're using our black brush here and we're just using it very softly. We've reduced our hardness and we've just made the size more appropriate based upon the area that we're working with. And it's now just a case of making several small clicks and little strokes just to brush away this motion blur effect. Now we don't want to take it away off the bus. It's nice to maybe leave a little bit of an aura of it around the bus. So I'm just taking away everything, everything else basically, nothing that's, that's part of the bus itself, none of the background, but keeping a little edge to it. Now, the convincing aspect with getting this motion right is suggesting the direction of motion. Now, what you tend to find with this, if you look at kind of uh, shots of, of fast moving, uh, fast moving cars and things like that, there may be that area of sharpness that's just at the very front. So as the bus is moving to the left from the right, I think it's a good thing to actually add a little bit of clarity, just a little bit um, on the front of the bus, just so we can kind of get a clear idea of which is the front end, which is the back end, and therefore the direction of its moving. So it's sometimes good just to take away a little bit of the motion blur off the front of the object that you're trying to add the effect to. 
So I'm just going to go around a little bit further and just make sure that there's no elements initially that are blurred that we don't want to because we will have to go in a little bit closer with a, with our image looking a little bit more complicated um, where we've got the railings and the lamppost in front. We do have to go in a little bit closer and make sure we don't uh, blur those elements because they're not naturally moving within the image. We're only looking to add the motion blur to the bus. So once we've got the initial effect, which I think we have got down quite nicely there, let's just pull back a little bit here. So we get the idea, we've added the motion already, but we've still got this problem of the lamppost. It's blurred and that's not actually moving within the shot. So we need to remedy that. So keeping with the uh, layer mask that we've got set to black, we're gonna just zoom in a lot closer so we can be a lot more precise. And again, very, very delicately, we're just gonna make the brush a bit smaller and we're going to brush down the middle so we reveal the clarity and the sharpness in that lamppost. So don't worry if you catch areas that you start to make the bus a bit more clearer, say we did an accident like that. All we need to do is switch to our white brush and then just go back and then we can just mask it over again. This is the beauty of non-destructive editing with layer masks. So if you've never used it before, I'd, I'd highly recommend it because it does save you so much time. And if you do make little errors, it's natural. Everybody does. It's a quick way of being able to work over those errors just so you don't have to go back through all your history states and, and undo bits and pieces. So once we've got the lamppost clearly there. We can see also now the railings have the same effect. The railings aren't moving, but they've got that motion blur added to them. So now we're gonna to have to go back a little bit more closely. It does reveal a little bit more detail on the bus. So it is a little bit tricky, and this is why it's it's important to kind of be using the right type of image, or at least um, capturing an image to begin with without many distracting elements in front of it. Obviously, when using one, it's a little bit tricky here to show you if you get into these problems, how to deal with it. But ideally, we can be shooting the image without any of these distractions in front of our subject to begin with. So we're just making it really nice and soft. We're not going to reveal too much detail. Otherwise, it starts to lose the overall effect of motion. Keeping away from the wheels, because obviously those will definitely be moving and they're going to really need to keep the sense of motion in there as well. So it can take a little bit of time. It's not exactly a, a quick tutorial, but it can look really, really effective in the final versions. So we're just gonna to go towards the back of the bus. Trying to work around that wheel. And then make the brush a little bit smaller if we want to go a little bit more precise. Now I'm looking back at this and I can see there's little areas, the reflectors on the side of the buses here, they're nice and sharp now, which they wouldn't be because they're part of the bus. So I'm just gonna switch back to that white brush and we're gonna brush back in that blur. So it adds that more convincing effect. So let's have a look at it as a whole and where we were before, let's center it a bit more. This is where we were before, and now we've added that motion. So we've kept the front of the bus a little bit more clearer and cleaner. We've got a nice sense of blur moving from the left to the right, or right to the left, I should say. <laughs> but we've kept the clarity in the lamppost. We've kept the clarity in a lot of the railings around the front here as well, where they start to blur a little bit into the bus. Sometimes things like that can't be helped, but you can go really, really close in um, very precisely and use that layer mask tool just to reveal the top elements of the but that's a really simple and effective way of adding motion blur into a static shot now that can be done with people it can be done with cars it can be done with airplanes it can be done with so many different types of motion but hopefully you've really enjoyed that hopefully it gives you a little bit of an idea of things that you can try out in your editing and keep following iPhotography for more thanks for watching